U.S. Navy unmanned aviation. The X-47B has been designed for use aboard Nimitz-class aircraft carriers. Its tailless batwing shape will make it the stealthiest unmanned system ever to take to the skies. This is working completely without a pilot. The idea mm -hmm. is that it's, it has <coughs> ten times the range of the F, F-35s on board U.S. Uh, air, the fighter jets on the U.S. aircraft carriers because China's getting better weapons, so we need to get further back from the Pacific and use weapons that don't have any pilots driving them, any pilots deciding on the targets. Now, one of the big issues, these are fast subsonic aircraft, not like the drones, which are quite slow. One of the big issues is the pace of war is getting so fast that we need faster and faster weapons, and humans are the slow, slow part of the loop. But the, but the question really is, if it's getting so fast, slow down a bit. What's the big hurry to kill more people? I mean, what are we doing? Stealthy combat aircraft, which can think for itself. That's the British Mantis, which is also in an advanced stage of testing. Fully autonomous intercontinental aircraft. Hmm. Now, the thing about here is everybody talks here about things in the sky, but they're not the only robots that are being used in warfare. I just want to expand that out a little bit. This little robot's about this size, normally used for bomb disposal, which is you know, quite a good thing. You don't want people being killed by bombs. It can look under cars and fire a water cannon at them. But that size, it's made by the same people that make my vacuum cleaner. Look at this. It's got a little box on top. for mine clearance, of course it is. Now, there, there's a fully, you can't really use that in autonomous mode because it's so small, you could just, you knock it into a pit, really. Uh, you could dig a little pit. So DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency of the United States, have developed this thing, fully autonomous. It's called the Crusher. It's a seven-ton truck. And it's called the Crusher because it crushes the DARPA teamed up with the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, to create the crusher. <laughs> this is the kind of thing that's going on secretly. This has been going on since 2002, 2003. You can get, if you go onto the internet and read the US military roadmaps, you'll see it all there. Here's the Guardian Guardian. Mm -hmm. But China are developing these, Russia are developing these, Israel are developing these on the ground. There are sea vessels that are fully autonomous. DARPA is in phase two of an autonomous submarine hunting submarine. I mean, it's getting absolutely ridiculous. Everything's going at once. We, we have to draw a moral line somewhere. We were a bit late getting our act together for the drones, but we can't let it. We just can't let it go to the next stop, step. Um, I just say a little bit about international humanitarian law. Not very much. We've got lawyers here. Um, We've got the humanitarians on one side, which is you guys. On the other side, we've got the necessitarians. They're the people who, you know, you can kill people, you do whatever it takes to win a war. Now, the necessitarians don't like me putting this as a, as a tug of war. They say there's more shades than that. Well, look, we don't care what they say, do they? <laughs> <laughs> the problem for robots is that um, under international humanitarian law, We've got the principle of distinction for any weapon must undergo a test to show that you can distinguish between a civilian and a, a child Bullshit. and a soldier, a wounded soldier, a surrendering soldier. These have got to be, these have got to be done. I'm sorry, my time was switched so into funny mode. Um, so you've got to do, you've got to do these tests on all weapons. You can misuse them. But the problem with these weapons are they are indiscriminate weapons. I've been working in artificial intelligence for 30 years. You can tell the, you can tell a tank if it's a tank in a desert, but if it's, a, if it's in a wood or near a wood, and it's a truck and there's a tree branch behind it, you would think it was a tank. We're at a very crude level here. We're pushing forward well beyond the limits. And the idea of proportionality, where you can kill civilians, essentially paraphrasing, 
providing us proportionate military advantage. Robots can't do that kind of judgment. They can't make that kind of decision. It's crazy. And they can't be held accountable either. Now, what we're doing here, what we're doing for it, and I'm going to quickly go through that, is that um, you can't see this very well. Um, but in, in uh, last year, in October 2012, a small group of NGOs got together. Um, we collected in New York, and it's got uh, the Nobel Women's Initiative there with Jody uh, Williams. We've got the Human Rights Watch there. We've got the Nobel Pugwash uh, as well, and Article 36 and Harvard Law Clinic and, and our <coughs> International Committee for Robot Arms Control. And we began to hatch a plot there to try to get these weapons stopped. The Human Rights Watch delivered a report on this on the 19th of November last year. On the 21st of November, the DOD, the US DOD, released a directive giving the green light to research and development of autonomous weapon systems. But they said they won't use them for the next five or ten years. So that's all. <laughs> so what we did next was, in April this year, we, uh, our plot came to fruition and we launched a campaign to stop killer robots from the UK Parliament. And we've now got 44 NGOs from 22 countries. And I'm glad to say they include Drone Wars UK and they include Code Pink. They've joined us.